We're, We're Batman, Batman at 89. Greetings, citizens of Gotham, and welcome once again to Batman It 89, the show that drives right into the gaping maw of Tim Burton's Batman to get to the hidden cave of truth inside. I am one of your hosts, John Parker. I am the other host, Niall McGowan. Hello, Niall. Hello, John. How are you? Yeah, I'm, ve- I'm very excited, because uh, I think this may be, like, in terms of just like sheer content within a minute, I think this might be my, my favorite minute of the whole film. Oh, well, I, w- I won't uh, delay any longer. We are joined today by the multi-talented writer, actor, comedian, burlesque performer, Audra Wolfman. Hello. Hello. And our listeners, you may know Audra from her previous appearance on the Mogwai Minute. <laughs> I'm the one that did all the dumb Mogwai voices. <laughs> <laughs> In the film. Screw <laughs> you, man. Screw you. No, I, I just kept torturing, uh, you know, George and Neil with a uh, with bright light, bright light. <laughs> Do you have any Batman impressions you want to crack out or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I do. Uh, I do Batgirl, though. <laughs> right, well, I can the, do. You do get that in a later film. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I prefer Batgirl of the original TV show, of course. Yvonne Craig and her high kicks. Yeah. You're not alone. I think that's everybody's favorite. They, they don't really do a lot with the character after that, do they? Having having done that character for in a in a burlesque act and also just like at Comic-Con, I've realized that a lot of people have a thing for her for that particular Batgirl. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, yes, this is minute 71 and the minute starts with you guessed it, more Batmobile driving. And it ends Spooky with driving. the car entering a mysterious underground lair. Yeah, as I say, like much like one of the other minutes that I said, like this, I think this is like my favorite minute of the whole movie. Yeah, don't you this say that a lot? <laughs> yeah, but this is like uh, is this one, and then there was the one with uh, you know the Joker and the, the the mirror, mirror, like that bit. <laughs> because like the, the the what makes the scene great is the momentum of building up. And then by splitting it into two minutes, it's like, oh, yeah, if you combine these two, they're great. It's like two together. It's like my favorite scene in the whole movie. <laughs> but because oh. that one, like it, it was in the middle of his laugh, it cut off. And it's like, oh, no, you have to get the whole laugh together to get the real effect of how good it is. But it uh, ruined it for you. Yeah. But this is <laughs> this well, this one almost stands by itself. But it is because of that way. The the music, the, the Danny Elfman descent into mystery uh, mm. was building. We get the. Um, you know, him revving, putting his foot down on the accelerator, and there's a real... And then we we cut off, unfortunately. But with this one, now we got him zooming around the corner. We got an amazing, triumphant blast of the... Da, 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 da. It's like, <laughs> it's really, oh my God. You know, it's really... It's really... It's, this, this scene is almost like... They kind of realize, like, holy crap, we've got a really cool car and a really great soundtrack. We should just, like, take a minute to be like, look at this. Look at how yeah. good this is, you know? <laughs> but right. It is Enjoy the epic moment. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is, like, just trying to appre- – you, you can sit and appreciate it. And it's, like, selling kind of the grandeur of the machine and its environment, isn't it? So you can you can take it in for once. The movie's slowing down a little. That's good. Mm. Well, slowing down by ironically the Batmobile speeding up. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just a, it's a weird thing. It's because like I'm not a car guy. Like I'm not. I don't care for cars. I can't imagine Tim Burton or Danny Elfman are big kind of car guys either. That they would be like, oh yeah, the pistons and the horsepower and stuff like that. But for some reason, <laughs> they, they they can deliver a good like. Here's a really cool car zooming around, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> but well, yeah, I mean, even for people that don't really get into cars, I think. The Batmobile gives everyone a boner. Mm. <laughs> it's just that kind of car. Would, where would you put the this this design of the Batmobile? Like of all the Batmobiles, where would you rate this one, Audra? Is this like I, a top or you prefer? Like you say, like you you know you do the Yvonne Craig Batgirl for a burlesque act, so you might have a more of an affinity for the old sixties. Uh, of course, I do. Mm. Yeah, basically, I I want Batman to be kitschy. I want. I want that car to have fins on it. Um, but this car is perfect for this movie. You know, the art direction is 
is just flawless in this movie and everything matches. Yeah. And this car is a perfect car for this particular world. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want the, uh, you know, the sixties be finned car <laughs> <laughs> gas guzzling down, down the, uh, the the uh, dark woods here. Oh no, that would look so wrong. I want someone to, <laughs> to right? uh, create that and upload it to YouTube, please, please. <laughs> I have a bit of information though on you know talking about gas guzzling because at this point we do get to see quite a nice shot of the old uh, the high powered exhaust thing they've got going here. The the mm. flame shooting out of the back. Uh, I've got the note that um, like all gadgets aside from the cocoon. Uh, on the Batmobile in both movies were fully functional, although the exhaust afterburner could only run for 15 seconds at a time due to the amount of fuel that it consumed. <laughs> it blow up as well, yes. I'd imagine. Look at the damn thing. Yeah. Jesus. So, I mean, I got 15 seconds. I guess, like, as soon as it turns that corner and it's out of view of us, that's when it just dies. Like, it's like, we got that one, like, that little bit, and that's, that thing just, oh, no, it came to a dead halt right there. But Well, as, as well, right, looking at that, fiery kind of thing coming out out of it shouldn't the car be going faster than it looks like it is because it doesn't look like it's going that much faster than a regular car does it don't ruin the scene john it's awesome right? <laughs> <laughs> like it's pretty You're ruining quick. it for me <laughs> yeah it's like we're gonna have to wrap up the podcast again i keep ruining this damn thing for a dial here <laughs> but uh, i do have some other because uh, we you know we talked about danny elfman way back in you know the early minutes because that's when it was appropriate to talk about him, when we had credits week and there was nothing else to talk about. Like, hey, here's the music. Uh, are you a Danny Elfman fan, Audra? Like, you know, both of his com- compositions and potentially Oingo Boingo and beyond, or? Oh, totally. Mm. Oh, I, totally. And, and like Forbidden Zone and just, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, all of it, all of it. But honestly, like, I know, obviously you, you love the music, but has Danny Elfman ever done better than this music in this scene this this is the best yeah i think it, it, it was really on to something here because this was between it was like beetlejuice i'm not too sure if he did something in between but like beetlejuice which i think is a, a amazing amazing underrated soundtrack mm. and then this and it's like holy crap that guy was on fire and you see interviews with him back at the time saying that my, my main priority is still oingo boingo the, the film composition is only a, an aside and it's like, what? what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, oh, you, I mean, Oingo Boingo is great, but this is something else, man. Come on. Do you have to dedicate to, this is you at half effort? What? <laughs> he changed his mind quickly there. Right. Because Oingo right. Boingo kind of disappear. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that was him. Like That was for the band members. They're like, I think Danny's leaving us. And he's like, no, guys, I'm totally still in the Oingo Boingo. Trust me. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Keeping it real. He's just like, Tim, call me. You know, <laughs> just like at the little side. Like every other director in Hollywood, call me. So, <laughs> Well, you know, he doesn't have to tour. That's the main upside to doing these scores, isn't yeah. it? Although, And you get paid a lot more. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And talking, though, about this, you know, incredible score, and I'll never take anything away from it. But much like, you know, some, so many things you find out about things that you, that you love, it's actually... It's actually kind of lifted from other sources. There's like you can call it what? you can call it an homage, or you can say that it was you know he ripped it off, or you can say that oh it's just you know he he lifted it and that was it's you know he's worked it in with his own material. But a lot of people will point out that you know the main theme like you know da, 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 like the, the particularly the opening uh, sounds mm. very similar to the Bernard Herrmann score for Journey to the Center of the Earth. Which is if you if you oh. listen to them beside oh. each other, it's like yeah, that's virtually identical. <laughs> it's now you're ruining it. Oh, that's the thing. And then also, actually, kind of weirdly appropriately, a lot of people say it sounds very similar to some of the music in The Wolfman from 1941, which is oh, yeah, done by Charles Previn, Hans J. Salter, and Frank Skinner. And it's ironic because Danny Elfman would go on to score the Wolfman remake in uh, 2010. <laughs> And, uh, oh, everything's connected. Yeah, plus, we have Audra Wolfman right here. So, <laughs> hi. <Yeah. laughs> but I mean, that, that this guy, this one of those things. Like, oh, this could you know spoil it for you. But to be fair, it's like you know a lot of people point out that like the Star Wars theme is just it's the Eric Korngold music from yeah. King's Row. 
that's just been rejigged by John Williams. And it's like, I didn't know that either. You've that, that's my favorite movie. <laughs> stop it, Niall. Stop it. <laughs> that's, that, that's the thing, though, because even though that, you know, I've encountered this a couple of times where, like, I really love the music to Manhunter, which was like the first Hannibal Lecter film. And it's an amazing piece of music. It's ominous synth that's uh, just called like Graham's theme for Will Graham, the character. And then someone just once said, yeah, that's that's the keyboard from the end of Col- Comfortably Numb. It's the same exact thing. And if you listen to oh. it, it's like, yeah, it totally is. But what's, uh, you know, same with that, as with Star Wars, as with this, the ripoff or homage of whatever you want to call it is better. It sounds better to me than the original thing. So I'm like, well, I don't care where you got it from. <laughs> it's good. Plus the, con- so. the context helps because when you're hearing that piece, you're, you're thinking of that movie. And it, it puts images in your mind and things. Unless I'm just insane and I picture things like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, all art influences other art. You yeah. can't have anything that lives in its own vacuum. Mm. So it, it, all art is informed by other great art. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. don't mind it at all. Yeah. Well, what's the, the phrase is something like, you know, every great artist steals or something like that. There's some famous quote that's like, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. along those lines, basically, anyway. But uh but that's not, you know, in no way am I trying to take away from Danny Elfman here. I'm just saying this is a thing that people have pointed out. And particularly with the journey to the center of the Earth one, that is very much like, yeah, it does sound incredibly similar. The Wolfman one, it's not so much. But at the same time, I could take that more as something because that would almost be like, well, you know, Tim Burton was obviously very influenced by the, you know, the old Hammer horror films and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, d- the wolf man's like, oh, it's a duality of man tale. If he turns into a monster and that man's a duality of man. Because both characters turn into, you know, different, you know, both have dual identities and whatnot. So I could take that yeah. as been like a direct thematic reference. But, uh, oh, yes. Speaking of dual identities, uh, in, in the minute, Vicky, you see a staring at Batman yet again. And I think this time yes. she sees Bruce like in him. She can, she can tell, but obviously she can't just come out and say anything, but she's, she's properly staring at him, which surely is a pretty bad etiquette in a car to stare at the driver. It's a moment of chin recognition. Yes, yes, it is. It's that, it's that chin and those lips. Can't deny it. Luckily, though, Batman has a, a thing installed for such an occasion. Was apparently, he's, he's at least thought that this might come up. So he's got this little light thing to be like, ah, she's staring at me, got to turn on the light. And this is either from someone else he's had to give a lift to, or he's been driving Alfred around and he's just been sitting next to him like, you know, you're getting a few crow's feet near your eyes, sir. And he's like, oh, that's <laughs> this old asshole, turn on the light. <laughs> I like the way there's no need for that little light either, because it only makes her look away for about half a second yeah. before something else happens anyway. So, you know, what was the point in putting that in the movie? In case she wanted to, like, read a book, she'd have a little little light, night light over there. Yeah, yeah. I suppose he could be out in that Batmobile all night long waiting for crime. Yeah. So he needs to, you know, read some books. <laughs> yeah, it's like an airplane. Oh, exactly, yeah. Imagine us sitting around in that suit for, like, hours just in the car. It's like, how you'd be how the amount of sweat going on. It'd be... And, they, and having to get up out of it and the little rubber will be all sticking to your body and it'd be like oh, oh <laughs> man is he wearing a diaper under there he's got to be wearing a diaper he must be yeah. he must have Depends. some kind of setup. yeah because <laughs> I mean yeah. I've never worn rubber like that but I imagine oh jeez I mean I've worn PVC that's hot enough mm. <laughs> wow tell us about that <laughs> yeah, yeah you should know I suppose <laughs> but the... what the weirdest thing is how you have to put the baby powder on before you put the the PVC. Or oh, you just never, never get it off. <laughs> You'll never get it off. You have to go to emergency room. That's what John Can did know that. Then... And that's why he's perpetually wearing PVC trousers when you see him. Because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds hygienic. <laughs> the same ones I put on at 17 are still attached to my legs. <laughs> Can you imagine Batman baby powdering himself then? That would be quite a scene in this movie. Well, Alfred does it for him. Oh, yeah, of course. He'd be patting him down. That's another scene. I don't, I'd don't. much rather have the image of Batman doing it himself than Alfred doing it for him. <laughs> well, I, I just actually read a Batman comic where Alfred had to dress up like Batman to cause a distraction. So now I am uh... also thinking of Alfred applying baby powder to his own naked flesh. Oh, oh. 
Uh, his saggy, wrinkly, <laughs> naked flesh. That's another thing, though. Yeah, well, he has the other practicality as well of something that Vicky herself might even be pondering, looking at his eyes. He also has to apply the eye makeup, which is a thing they hmm. never really get around to addressing in the films. Is that, yeah, he has to have a big kind of raccoon eyes, basically, to, to wear this because it looks silly otherwise if you... If he's just wearing the cowl and it's just like flesh colored around his eyes, it doesn't look as cool. Well, why didn't he just have like some kind of something else over the eyes, like lenses, like, uh, you know, the Green Goblin in Spider-Man has those lenses. Well, maybe we talked about that then uh, way back in the, the beginning, as you you might recall, the, in their scripts, the original scripts, it did say that they wanted lenses. Mm. And we were just like, well, exactly. yeah, it must have been just like, oh, I gotta let the guy, gotta give him something to act with beyond a pout, you know, <laughs> give him his eyes at least. Well, well, then, I mean, uh, eyes back on the road because Vicky screams because the Batmobile is about to crash. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't crash. It, <laughs> there's, a, there's a wall in front of it, which now this, this confused me immensely until I read some of the script because I never knew what was going on. The, the Batmobile is going towards this sort of wall, this, this rocky face, and then they, they just go through it. Now, because at first I thought, oh, is it a hologram? But then Vicky opens her eyes and looks back and you see for a split second, like a door closing. So I was like, is it, is it just a really fast door? Like I, I could never figure it out. But then look, I mean, they might have changed things, obviously, but the original draft of the script um, has it be, in that it's a secret passageway hidden by a fake tree, which makes a lot more sense <laughs> to me. Like that, that, that works. But apparently in, in this, in the final one, it's a hologram. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, which I I don't like or buy well, at all. I always took it to be like, oh, it must be a hologram. But then the film seems to contradict that because she looks down, she looks yeah. behind her and it looks like there's a door sliding down. So Yeah, <laughs> unless it's a door with a hologram in front of it for some <laughs> reason. I don't know. Ah, the hologram is the rocky parts. Yeah. But, but there's an actual door that, that sort of like goes up and down. Mm. Oh, like a like a metal yeah. door. Like a rickety old garage door. It's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's all, oh man, where'd I put my clicker? Okay, here we go. Yeah. Would he have that built into the car or would he carry it around? That's, oh, these are all things yeah. we need to consider. It's in the glove box. <laughs> yeah, but I do love this that transition again as i say like it's a, a pure one pure minute of this film it's just oh it's all gold because again you do get another build-up as she's looking at him in the whole light thing because the, the music does do a little sort of, do, 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 da, 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 da. and then we get zooming what we think is going to be a collision zooms through the cave wall you know air air quotes and then of course we get Whatever we get another fantastic blast of that you know da, 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 da. And uh, zooming down the the you know the, the corridor or whatever you want to call it to the cave, which is just amazing as well. And I actually, again, we've been noting a lot of little things that Kim Basinger is doing in this film. There's little facial tics and stuff that are really making it. And uh, yeah. I really, I do love her reaction here of like because everything it, she's really channeling. I think like the the audience here because we've been overwhelmed by all of this kind of really cool, amazing, crazy kind of stuff. And she's kind of looking around. She looks back and she sees, you know, the garage door coming down. And she's seeing the thing zoom in. And she's kind of looking at him. And then she has a little bit of this, like, just kind of shakes her head and just puts her head in her hands with a real, like, this is fucking nuts. You know, it's just really, like, <laughs> yeah. it's really, it's like, yeah, I can understand. In that situation, you would be like, whew, this is, this is a lot to take in, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's more realistic than if she was just like, oh, my God, and, like, in wonderment to everything happening. In reality, you would just be like, kill me now. I've just, I've had enough. <laughs> yeah. She, I mean, it's nice because we're, we're experiencing it through her. And I feel like a lot of these scenes, it's, it's kind of like to have that ambassador where you're like, yeah, I'd be weirded out too. And so you identify yeah. with her. Yeah, definitely. And as you said in the last minute, I mean, she still doesn't really know where he's taken her. So she wouldn't be that amazed and like, whoa, isn't this cool? Because like, at the same time, in the back of her mind, she still doesn't know what's going to happen when they arrive wherever they go. Yeah, it's a possible abduction, <laughs> so she she's not going to be in a world of wonder. Yeah, 
Like I do this would be like this this is the most elaborate just going to bury me in a hole in the woods I've ever experienced in my life. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> It's going to be one deluxe hole. <laughs> well, my, my favorite band, Public Image Limited, have a song, Pop Tones, which is about an abduction that gets taken to the woods and someone thrown into a hole. <laughs> so there you go. It's making me think of that song. <laughs> Everyone listen to that. Pop Tones. That's my recommendation for this yeah, episode. Just do a, a fan edit <gasps> where you just cut the scene to that song. There you go. <laughs> so... I don't want to tempt the, the legal team of, of Johnny Rotten. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I won't be playing. Yeah, he'll he'll come over to your house and talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that <laughs> would be cool, stop. actually. Yeah, <laughs> come over. In looking at this, though, I was like, oh, but you know, because we this is the hologram entrance. If we're taking it at that, is like one of the many entrances we see that the Batmobile is able to get into the, you know, the the cave via. And like throughout the years, we've also seen, you know, of course, in the '60s show, it was just a whole. <laughs> in a wall and had a little a little sign to flop down when they were yeah. coming and stuff and uh, uh you know in the nolan films it's like a waterfalls holding it and uh one of the things i will say for you know the, well, the hologram thing again was referencing uh the dark Knight returns that's, i think that's where they swiped that idea from and uh but one thing i will say for batman versus superman is i really like the bat cave entrance and that it's because it's like it's in the lake it's like a little thing comes up out of the lake and mm. he zooms up a little ramp and you know, just sort of lands the Batmobile on that and zooms down again. It's like, oh, that's a that's a nifty little, you know, it's a very mm-hmm. computer game looking kind of thing. I think I might have even been in an, uh, an advert for Arkham Knight. They actually had the same thing. So maybe that's where they took it from. <laughs> but ah. uh, yeah, just uh, the other entrances to the, the, the Batcave that I appreciated. I did note because I was trying to see like, where is this? Anyway, where was this, was this shooting? And I couldn't really find this these particular roads. But I did note that apparently where they shot uh, the 66 show was in Bronson Canyon, which apparently is a very famous location to shoot in the U.S. Yeah, you can go check out the caves oh, through there. Oh. oh. You, can, you can just walk right through. <laughs> oh, have you been? Or I haven't been, but uh, a lot of friends have been. I've, uh, one of these days I'm going to get there. Oh, cool. We'll do a special report. Uh, That'll be a special episode coming soon. No, don't no. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you go, you have to, you have to wear the Batgirl outfit as well. That's the thing. So. Well, sure. You guys are going to come visit, right? And then we'll all go out there in a in ridiculous costumes. Oh, of course. I mean, we make so much money from doing podcasts. We we can just fly out at a moment's notice. It's fine. <laughs> oh yeah, all your sponsors want you to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all all one of them. No, I mean, there's not even one. If you want to sponsor the show, <laughs> get in touch. <laughs> Yeah, I'll sponsor it. How many doll hairs do you need? <laughs> <laughs> no. but, uh, if we just start saying we're sponsored by Squarespace, maybe they'll just give us a free site after a while or something. Yeah, after, after a while, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, you know what I really need to lie down on? is a Casper mask. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, I just had a quick note of other things that were filmed in Bronson Canyon, because there's a couple of cool things. Like Star Trek, right? Yep, Star Trek VI was, uh, was filmed there. Yeah, which, which one's six? I'm trying to... After after four, it's, I stopped paying attention. It's the last one of the old crew. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I remember rightly, it's better than five. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then beyond that, appropriately, I guess, would be Zorro rides again, because Batman, Zorro, they're all little connections. Uh, Atom Man versus Superman. Atom Man. Is, yeah. Ugh, uh, that's rubbish. The Return of Dracula. Which is like, you can't get rid of this guy. He just keeps coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like, yeah, he just keeps coming back to life. Um, teenage Caveman, which is, I just, t- uh, <laughs> uh, I take that because our friend and former guest of the show, Ash, he's in a band called Zombina and the Skeletons, and they have a song called Teenage Caveman. So Yes, yes, yeah. that's a, it's got a video as well, so go check that out on YouTube. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, Flesh Gordon, that was, no. that was used. <laughs> <laughs> Lo- Lo- wow. uh, my my partner Lauren, she was in the in the shop once trying to buy Flash Gordon, and she accidentally picked up Flesh Gordon, which is a very very <laughs> yes. different film. And which I think she she almost bought it. <laughs> so we, and then we're like, wait a minute. And then just notably for us, uh, the Scorpion King was also filmed there, which is eh, you know it's got the rock in it, so yeah. right on. Uh, it's okay. Then, it's uh, better than the Mummy Two. Mm. And then uh, Twin Peaks hey. also filmed. Yeah, I'm presuming. Hey. I'm assuming it's Owl Cave is is that. So I guess Owl Cave is technically 
the 1960s bad cave i think i think that's what we can oh my god that's blown my mind i'm never gonna be able to watch twin peaks the same again yeah but uh yeah so <laughs> nice bit of a little bit of trivia for you all there oh yeah crazy i mean in the actual minute i mean i don't have any cool stuff like that but i just love the the shot of it pulling up the batmobile and on that weird little circular I don't know what you want to call it. A little parking spot he's made for it there. <laughs> it's just, it, it holds on the car. So you you can go, damn, that's a cool car. <laughs> yeah. And the angle and everything, it's, uh, you know, the way it's put in the frame, it's just deliberately to make you admire this machine they've made. Yeah, a bit of a car pedestal mm. that he parks on. Yeah, it's almost like yeah, Batman's trying to display it, but he has nobody to come into the Batcave to look at it. Maybe that's why he's brought Vicky. He's just like, I want to show you how cool this thing looks. <laughs> on the on- of course, <laughs> it's a bit like a a cake stand. You know, weirdos who have a cake on a stand. Like, look at this cake. That's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be like this is again. He's got the the CD player with a little bat symbol carved on. He's like, I'll just try to angle myself so she sees that. <laughs> be like. <laughs> Check out that. You know. you know, it's all about branding. <laughs> it is. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And it's echoed with the Joker. Again, he's not in this minute, but Joker is all about the branding. He he brands absolutely overnight. He's got Joker everything. <laughs> and not just beauty products. No, no. Oh, they should legitimately do Joker beauty products. I'm sure they've probably done maybe a lipstick or something, but they should do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hair, nice green hair dye. Oh, that'd be great. A l- line of purple suits. I, think, no, uh, I, I would wear that in a heartbeat. I'd be in a yeah. purple suit. I think, though, with, like, we don't ha- really have Hot Topic over in the UK. But I remember people... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I heard people in the, on, on, you know, on the internet when Suicide Squad came out saying there was, like... There was Joker hair dye and Harley oh. hair dye and stuff like that. So I guess they did. Oy. They tried to do that. It just happened to be with a terrible Joker. So it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and a pretty bad movie. Oh, I've probably <laughs> alienated some of the listeners. I don't care. Oh, it's 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 all it's all right. It's, they, no, we're not. It's it's an all right movie. Air quotes, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not dwell on it just... because nobody <laughs> okay. really wants to think about that film. <laughs> The, I mean, the original draft here is, is quite different for all of this last section. I won't go through everything because I'd be here all day. But it has Batman knocking Vicky out with a sort of smelling capsule. He like breaks the capsule open and makes her smell it and she falls asleep. Which again is even creepier than what we've already been discussing. That's <laughs> uh, He knocks her out. And then while trying to secretly take her back to the Batcave, uh, the, the Batmobile, when he's, he's going to throw her in, it it gets towed by the cops, or at least they try and tow it away, <laughs> which is just bizarre. I mean, I do like that gag. That's kind of funny. I can see why they cut it, though, because it kind of it, it completely ruined the, the pacing of the escape, wouldn't it? And then <laughs> the grandeur of the car zooming off and things. Oh, yeah. And then he's like, got to go down to the tow place and pay $300 <laughs> to get it out. That would be really funny. I, I, if they went the whole way with it, then I'd be on board. If he had to go and get out his back credit <laughs> card and be like, can I pay with card? No, we don't take card. Give, give me half an hour. I'll go get some cash. And <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of like in the in the last week because we had the line of when he's lying unconscious and Bob's like, you know, check his wallet. If he was like, he's like, oh my god, I hope they don't take my back credit card just in case I need it in case the car is towed. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it gets towed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> his hand is and he goes to cap <laughs> over his wallet because he's like, oh no, where does he keep his wallet? Well, the, we don't. We we were having to discuss the some of the mechanisms on the the bat uh, on the utility belt because he had a thing where to get the grapple hook he pressed a thing on the belt buckle and then it slid out like on a little automated thing towards his hand okay so i guess yeah. he has like a load uh-huh. of stuff back just over his ass mm. and then <laughs> whenever he needs it he, he clicks the thing and it slides out as needed <laughs> That's not a bad idea because it's covered by the cape. So people can't see unless the cape's, you know, f- fluttering around. Yeah. It'll yeah. be hidden. So, yeah, right. that's not a bad plan. Although not comfortable to sit down, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. No, no. He's got the most complicated fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> we should bring bring them back anyway. Bring them back into style. I miss them. There are They're kind of a thing. It's like, it's like the kid, the millennial kids that, like, didn't really don't remember the 80s because they were too young or they were born in the 90s. They're kind of doing the 80s crap. Like they're wearing 
or at least in in California, oh, they're wearing I'm the, on board the with fanny this. packs. And <laughs> <laughs> did you over there have those uh, t-shirts that changed color, like with with your body? Oh, yeah, like a mood yeah. shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it would just show big sweat patches instead. Obviously, <laughs> right. Yeah, why do you oh, want was that? Was it global global hyper color or something? Was that what That's it was called? Right. Yeah, that sounds yeah. familiar. That sounds right. But at, at the time, I I had one. I actually I lived abroad. I lived in Cyprus, and um, I may have mentioned this on the show before. Actually, I can't remember. But uh, basically, because it's always hot, ninety nine percent of the time. So to get that color change thing, I'd have to put the t shirt in the fridge for a bit before I put it on. <laughs> 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 and they'd be like, "Look, it's changing. It's changing." I think, though, in terms of notes for this minute, I think I'm I'm out. Unless, uh, do you guys have anything else in particular you want to bring up for for this minute? Hmm. I haven't really got anything. I've got the Batmobiles in the specs. I've got its arsenal, but it, it, I might save that for when he actually uses some of the uh, the equipment. Although, oh, there is one thing. There is uh, he might use this again. Actually, there's a, there's that central foot under the vehicle. Which he can, you know, he, he does use it later. He can plop it down and spin the car kind of thing. So I'm, I'm assuming that's how he gets out of the cave. He'll put that down, spin the car around on the spot rather than the, the sort of plinth it's on rotating, which would make a lot more sense and probably be cheaper to just rotate the, the platform. But there you go. It's Batman. He doesn't think sensibly. <laughs> I mean, as we see in Batman Returns, though, it does come it's handy outside the cave as well. So, mm, yeah, you know, it's... It, pays off so uh do you find that there's like a fetishistic pleasure in how all these things work and all the sort of toys and gears he's got uh what do you mean just like or is figure- this too personal well you know um, <laughs> <clears throat> i don't like to speak about that on air what you mean just in terms of like wor- working out like oh that's what that's for like that's exactly yeah i mean i did yeah. get a little because it was actually one I, I was thinking you know the you know as he's coming into the cave the little light thing what that was purely just to do, uh, oh, just to shine in people's eyes for when they're looking at him. But when you yourself mentioned that, like, oh, it's probably like a little light so he can see if he's reading something. I was like, yeah, that's, oh, that's totally what it's for as well. Like, it's an no. adjustable little light. I, I think it is that's to blind it. people because of the angle it's at. It, it's it's in case he needs to bring someone in the car. Like, uh, if he needs, like, Gordon or someone. I mean, it, might as well, it serves two purposes, though. Maybe mm. he can flip up and... Or maybe he can stick his hand up and, like, adjust it and well, he, whatnot. He can write his checks to go and uh, get his car out of the impound lot. <laughs> That's right. $300. Uh- <laughs> Did they take back check? I'm not sure. Do people even take checks these days? I don't I don't see them. I never. I, I don't even think I have a checkbook. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I think the only thing people do with the checks these days is, like, pay their rent. Maybe. Yeah, I don't even do that. I just, I just directly wire it to the to the landlord. Although I may be moving into my own house, which we'll, we'll cut this from the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it may, it may finally. And here's my be bank account out. number. <laughs> well, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> and on that bombshell, <laughs> should we, should we head off? Should we end the episode for now? That's everyone's yeah. notes, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Before we wrap up, though, Audra, where can our good listeners find you online, get in touch with you, check out your stuff? Hey, man, dig me up at audrawolfman.net, and that's Wolfman with two N's. And uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagrams and all other kinds of uh, dumb places like that. Um, If you want to check out my Weird Al burlesque troupe, you go to Facebook and type in tight and nerdy. That's a great name. The yeah, tight and nerdy, the world's first and only Weird Al burlesque troupe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, unfortunately, of course, I've only seen it online because uh, you haven't done a show in Liverpool, UK yet. But uh, get us a show, man! Get us a show. <laughs> well, if you if you ever we'll do right come over, over, yes, we'll we'll be there. You know, supporting the supporting the show. But everyone, check well, it out. If we ever do Bat Minute Live, you you guys can support. <laughs> you could be the, the. Thank you. <laughs> We yeah, we've got the nerdiest, nudist girls you've ever seen. Well, we sadly we don't have that. But uh, if you do <laughs> want to talk to us, I'm sure you don't now. You've got much better things to be doing, obviously, with the with what Audrey was just saying. But if you want to talk to two nerdy, <laughs> boring white guys, then we are available without pants with, on. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. That's the the gamble you're uh, you know taking on board. Then you can message us on Facebook at the Batminute89 Listener Society and join in with everybody there. And also tweet us at Batminute89. That'd be cool too. 
And the most important thing is to join us again on Friday because we're back with minute 72 of Batman. See you then. Subterranean Summit. As our peculiar principality protector presents his prodigious pad to a perplexed potential paramour, will she spy something in an eye to help her recognize this guy? Find out next time. Same bat pod. Different bat minute. <laughs>